How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Good, really good. good. How are you? Uh, so I want to start with, um, I, you've heard me say this before, but I think Mosul is so effing well done. I rewatched it last night um, and I can't recommend the movie enough. It is just really fantastic. Um, this is uh, Matthew's feature directorial debut. There's a lot of things that this movie is doing that are not the norm. When did you guys think, oh yeah, he can actually handle this material? Matt is one of the most accomplished screenwriters in the business. We've been huge fans of his for years. And um, we knew, we fell in love with the, the article, the, origi- the article that this is based on. Luke Mogelson wrote an article for The New Yorker, fantastic piece of journalism, where he embedded himself with uh, the SWAT team in Mosul for six months and documented their experiences. And we knew it was gonna be a difficult story to translate. So we needed to approach somebody of Matt's caliber. We did. And Matt cracked a very difficult story in such a way. It was basically the way Matt took to the story and sort of understood how to wrangle it in a way that we hadn't imagined. He, it felt like he had a lot of ownership, creative ownership over the movie because of that. And that I think is what inspired us to, to ask him to direct. I'll ask you, Joe. Um, one of the things that I think is really um, great about this is that it is uh, Arab-speaking people that are being depicted as heroes, as family people, and not just terrorists, and the stereotypical kind of thing that uh, a lot of American audiences in the world are exposed to. Can you sort of talk about that aspect? It's a critical aspect. I mean, that is what, you know, the, as Ann said, when we read that article, I think it was the it was, it was perhaps the best piece of journalism we've ever read because it created such a point of view, such a powerful point of view um, in a part of the world that, uh, that you know, we, we don't think about um, much as Americans and we don't have access to the true stories and the real stories that happen there. We only see um, our, our, our side of it. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I think we have to remember in media how powerful a tool it is uh, and how it can alter and affect the way that people think about things. Um, and it's, uh, it's critically important that we use that tool for positive representation to tell um, um, stories that, uh, that you know, might not get told uh, otherwise. And I think as artists running a company, it's also our responsibility to, um, to find those stories and to help them get told. Um, and, uh, and I think Matt and the cast all did an incredible job of, uh, of you know, telling this in the most realistic uh, and, uh, and, you know, human, with, with the most tr- human truth that you possibly could. Uh, and we think it's a beautiful film as well. Uh, one of the things about this is that um, it's an Arabic cast speaking all Arabic language. There's no Americans in this. At, at, during the development process, even though you guys run Agbo, was anyone along the way saying, yeah, is this really what, you know what I mean? Because this is not the norm of what a lot of people want to produce early in their um, studios uh, run. You know, as we were developing the, the movie with Matt, it became clear to us early on, I think Matt was the first to bring it up, um, that in order to really do this story justice, because we wanted to make it as much as we were capable, a story from the Iraqi point of view. That's why we looked out, looked for great creative collaborators like Muhammad, people who could bring, become our partners in this process on a creative level to help us translate the story from a very specifically Iraqi point of view. And the actors were great partners with us as that, in that as well. And early on before um, any of them got involved, Matt said, he really thought that this movie needed to be told in Arabic. And that, as soon as he said it, Joe and I were like, yes, of course, you're right. Because that's the only way we can really sort of run, run at that experience, the, be- the best way we can run at that experience rather than having to translate it to, to English or have the actors speak in English. So we, we looked very hard throughout the Arabic speaking world for, for actors. Um, and look, it was, Joe and I were coming off of our run at Marvel. This was the first movie that we decided to produce and finance through our, our, our new, new company, Agbo. And a lot of our philosophy in filmmaking is sort of what can you do, what can you contribute to the process of cinema that is unique to you, unique to your voice, unique to your capabilities. There's not a lot of people that could have made a movie like this in the Arabic language, if any. 
You know, I don't know this, this movie would have been made this way anywhere else other than Agbo. But we were in a really unique position that we had had a lot of success and that we could sort of push a, move, a difficult movie through the system that other people may not be able to get through the system. And we looked at it as our privilege and our opportunity and our responsibility to do that on this movie. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm actually really grateful you made this because there's a lot going on in Iraq that I think people see on the news, they hear about in the newspapers, but until you see it visually in a movie like this where you see what's really being depicted, um, I think this is much easier for people to get to, to understand what people are sacrificing and what's going on on that side of the world. To wake up to war every day of your life, again, that's what I was talking about earlier, is there's a pr perspective shift here. And I have to use the word privilege, and we're a very privileged nation. Um, and uh, it, it is important. I think, look, if there's one thing that um, uh, digital distributors are doing is that they're, they're allowing more international stories to be told because they can target international audiences more specifically. Um, we're able to, you know, utilize um, uh, in Indian caste uh, in, in significant ways in extraction uh, and, and reach the Indian audience in a very specific way, perhaps in a way that we might not have been able to theatrically. Uh, and I think um, uh, it's allowing more international stories to be told. And as I said earlier, we have responsibility in media to keep widening the perspective away from a, a Hollywood Anglo-centric uh, perspective. Uh, something I normally don't single out someone's performance when I'm talking to, I, I just normally don't do it, but I rewatched the movie last night and I believe you pronounce his name Suhail. He is absolutely commanding the screen in this movie. He is fantastic. What is your reaction? Obviously, you know, in the casting process, you never really know how it's going to go, but what was it like for you guys seeing dailies or, or seeing him because he is spectacular in this? Yeah, I mean, I remember right from his, it was, it was his audition where that revelation really first came to us. And I mean, his story is remarkable. I mean, he is part of that Iraqi diaspora who had to flee the country because of difficult conditions, because of oppressive conditions that were specific to them and their families. And he ended up in America, I think it was in New Mexico and just sort of working in a, I think it was in an old age home, you know, um, in the kitchen. And here's this amazing actor who, despite his training in Iraq, you know, because of the, those, those social conditions, and those political conditions ended up in a very far away place with far different opportunities. And it was, you know, when, when, to realize that we had this opportunity to not only find him, but then cast him in this role. I mean, that was part of the miracle of what this movie was. It's sort of, in a way, it was a, a way to sort of counteract some of the trauma that's happened to that culture because of the wars that have happened there. And I think Suhail's experience is a perfect example of that. Remarkable actor who was not working as an actor. And also, if I'm not mistaken, you guys put him in Cherry after being in this. Yeah. And he's got a cameo in Cherry. I mean, he's, he's one of the best actors that we've ever worked with. And it, as Ant said, his story is, um, uh, is, is both tragic and inspiring that this incredibly talented actor did not have a forum in, in which he could share his gifts. Uh, and um, we couldn't be more proud of his performance in the film. I think it's, it's an Oscar worthy performance. I guess talk a little bit about the editing room and working with Matthew, uh, because obviously this is his first feature. Um, did you guys have to like struggle with a much longer cut? Were there you know, things that you discovered in the editing room that you had to solve? No, I think because he's a writer, he was incredibly efficient. Uh, and the first cut of the movie was excellent. Um, you know, this is a, it's a very specific mission film. You know, there's, there's not a lot of room to breathe by design. Uh, it's meant to be relentless. It's meant to drop you into the, um, uh, you know, incredibly um, dramatic and painful uh, days that um, the people in Mosul experience every single day of their life. Uh, and, uh, and he captured that. Um, uh, and, and his first cut was excellent. He's a very emotional artist, Matthew, and he throws himself wholeheartedly uh, into everything he does. Um, that's a shame we couldn't get Muhammad on here, but Muhammad worked as a creative partner with Matthew um, because Matthew was so um, passionate about telling the story and he wanted to maintain authenticity uh, to the last detail. 
um, Mohammed is is the you know most renowned filmmaker in Iraq, and uh, Mohammed came to work with Matthew on the film, and they fostered a partnership that uh, allowed the movie, I think, to um, to stay um, uh, as true and realistic as possible. Before I run out of time with you guys, I do want to ask. Um, the other day, it came out that uh, basically streaming it's clearly the future. Uh, it's it's a um, it's huge. Obviously, this is coming out on Netflix. Um, and it just came out that, you know, Wonder Woman is going to get released on HBO Max and in theaters and Disney Plus is releasing their big Pixar movie, Soul, on, and both are actually coming out on Christmas Day on, uh, you know, on Disney Plus. What's your take on, you know, Wonder Woman going to HBO Max? I mean, I, I think Patty Jenkins said it best is that she made something that, um, uh, that she put an incredible amount of love and joy into, and now she's ready to share it with the world. And you know, circumstances are dictating that, you know, the options for people to view things uh, are, are best, that certain people will want to see it in the theater and other people for health reasons might need to see it at home. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's incredibly brave and bold of her as a filmmaker. Um, but I, I do think that this is the future of the business is that there can be room for both digital and theatrical. And in fact, both could perhaps enhance each other's um, business and, and experience. Um, but, you know, there are lots of people that are around the world that have greater access to digital than they do a theater. Um, and, uh, and this is just one way to, to reach those people. So as an artist, if you want to get the most eyeballs, I think that a joint theatrical digital um, play is, uh, is an incredible way to do that. I think it's going to bring a lot of new eyeballs and subscribers to HBO Max too. this movie. Oh, a hundred percent. But I actually I want, want to touch on, you guys have a great relationship with Netflix and uh, I, I am like, obviously you guys have had great success with the Avengers movies at the worldwide box office, making billions of dollars, but like with something like extraction, which is, I think Netflix's biggest movie that they've released their biggest original movie. Is it nice to sort of be able to not worry about your opening weekend box office and just make something that you are proud of and it just goes out there and you don't have to worry about it after? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's part of, it be, it's become a cultural problem that, uh, that we define the success of a film by its opening weekend box office. That um, not all movies have built to, um, to blow the doors off uh, um, with, uh, with gaudy numbers, the way that the Avengers films are. Uh, and, you know, I think perhaps the best thing and the greatest gift that Netflix and, and other digital distributors have given to artists is that they have obscured that metric, right? That metric is no longer important. They've made it irrelevant. Uh, and so stories can be told uh, and it really just becomes about the audience's response to those stories. Um, it's not about uh, any sort of system uh, built around it, i.e., you know, it's box office, how did it do those stories? Um, um, you know, it's not, it's not about some critical aggregate. It is literally about how is the audience responding to the story uh, and they can find it if they want to. And, you know, like I said, there are people um, that those stories can reach in different ways who, who might not have access um, to a theater or it's more cost effective for them because they can share an account uh, with other people Not everyone can uh, afford the a ticket to a theater the same way that that again, that we can here in the U.S. So um, I think uh, I think it's uh, you know it's disruptive in a very healthy way. I think that one of the things about Netflix is that they you can you don't have to release a four quadrant movie. You can aim at that specific audiences with Netflix because of their worldwide reach. Can you sort of just sort sort of talk about your relationship with Netflix and um, what you're looking forward to uh, doing with them? When you're trying to do something that's new and disruptive, which is what Joe and I, sort of the reason we formed our new company is for that exact purpose. You know, we like being pushed by technology. We like being pushed into new areas. We like the new possibilities that are become available in terms of how you reach audiences. This is stuff we feed off of um, and feeds our creative process. So the idea that, that Netflix is kind of like the wild west you know, it's a new format. They're still in the experimental phase of figuring out what works, how their system works, how they connect with audiences. So it's really nice to be partners with them at this moment in their growth arc. 
because there's all kinds of possibilities for filmmakers. And they've been a very um, open partner with us. They've been very creatively supportive of what we want to do. And I think that speaks to the fact that they are themselves in an experimental mindset in terms of what works on their platform and what the possibilities of, are on their platform. Um, so it's, yeah, it's amazing partnership for filmmakers. On that note, I, I really do encourage everyone who's watched this interview to watch Mosul. It is a fantastic movie. I really commend you guys for making it. And I really hope that uh, the world watches it because it's really, really, really well done. Thank you. For yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, cool. You guys, uh, good luck with your rest of the day. And I'm sure we will talk soon. All right, man. Sounds good, buddy.